to AI, really that most people like to compare it to, at least to me, when like they're talking about it, is the Matrix. And then to me, uh, I don't see like a direct comparison. <laughs> I think the Matrix is a lot of fantasy, but uh, I do think that there is a movie that is relatable to AI to me, uh, which is Jurassic Park. <laughs> I have thought about this like ever since like my very first. Uh, exposure to like generative AI overall, and I think I, I think of this guy yeah, every single time, right? Life uh, finds a way, and so like within Jurassic Park, like um, there's actually people that probably haven't seen it, right? It's like a 30 year old movie now, but so um, within it, uh, they uh, the first movie they essentially build a safety mechanism into the dinosaurs, right? They, they make them all male. <laughs> and then they think that that's the, the safety check, right? And the scientists are all secure because it, it's all the dinosaurs are male. So there's no way for them to jump or, or to uh, get outside of like confines of control, right? Because it's, it's all controlled. And then so as long as they can control that aspect of it, it's good. But as this particular scientist points out, they have to in order to like uh, get the DNA to work because it's like old DNA and it's a plot point, but it works uh, is that they have to inject chaos theory directly into the models. And, and then uh, by doing that, it allows for like, uh, things to happen and, and for the um, essentially like the male species to like uh, jump uh, gender uh, in certain instances and then become female. And it's just, you know, a, a side effect of introducing chaos theory into a system. And uh, that was in this, this guy was my first introduction into chaos theory. Like, like this, like uh, I was, I became curious about chaos theory overall because of like this movie when I was in like fifth grade. Right. Like, uh, and then this concept just fascinated me ever since. And then, so uh, within that, the, the funniest part is, <laughs> is that like, uh, here's the, like, uh, I mean, uh, as good of an omen as you could possibly get. Okay. Uh, and then we look towards LM models and, and AI overall, and we build AI directly on top of chaos theory. Uh, and then we build the control mechanism of AI as like the data layer, right? Uh, and then to me, that's like um, the, the big missing piece of this that like most people don't understand within that, right? Like within this whole entire argument, a lot of people, they try to tell me that I should fear AI overall. Like I should fear that we lose control over AI. And my uh, first argument to that is like, I like, I, I like prove to me that we haven't already. <laughs> like, I don't think anyone can do that. Um, and then secondarily is, is like, uh, I don't like, why should I fear the AI in that equation? Very simplistically, I mean, just that's my flat out honest argument and rebuttal to it. Like, um, I've grown up in a world ever since I was born where we have like nuclear weapons, uh, war, climate change, all kinds of things, right? Like, I, I fear humans in the equation. Like, I, I don't understand why I should fear uh, an artificial entity within in that equation uh and art, like the argument of fear is is that the artificial entity will be smarter than me and then i should then fear that like um that's not logical to me <laughs> like uh i fear the opposite right like i like my entire life i've i've feared the opposite i've always wondered like what would happen if society overall was like let's say like five percentage points smarter like i've never thought what would happen if uh, society overall was five percentage points dumber. Like I wouldn't want that. <laughs> I want like uh, five IQ points, right? Let's let's just raise it five IQ points. I wouldn't want to reduce it five IQ points. The f reducing five the the um, IQ of society by five I IQ points would scare me. Reducing or increasing the IQ of society by five IQ points would not scare me. And then so. Uh, taking that same logic, <laughs> it just uh, applies, right? Uh, overall, like I don't, I, I don't understand how that equation breaks down. But getting to uh, the main argument that, like, uh, is probably maybe in stri striking a little bit of fear, but probably pe making people think that, like, this is kind of uh, out there. But um, let me dive directly into that, right? So, very first thing is, is that let's look at um, this is a recent, this like. Um, 
expansion of mine called K for this neighbors. It's an algorithm that I've created, right? And it's like, I created it initially kind of jokingly, right? So there's an algorithm called K nearest neighbors. And then so uh, K nearest neighbors is it's a clustering algorithm. And then it just measures essentially like a clustering distance between um, and the cosine distance between like two uh, objects and two entities, right? Um, and then so uh, I take that same metric and that same cosine distance, but I want to find what is orthogonal rather than what is closest. And then within that, Essentially, what I can do is I can map out an entire data set if I know um, the k furthest neighbors and the k nearest neighbors of every single word within that data set. Um, so, like, for example, you know, hot, cold, light, dark, happy, sad, fast, slow, empty, full, uh, because they're orthogonal from each other. But that's human terms. <laughs> and then so what I've learned is, is that when you break this down into AI terms, AI doesn't break orthogonality down this exact same way, right? Um, I, and I've proven this, I, I can show this. Um, so a, AI is like a little bit different, right? Um, fast, empty, happy, small, hard, full, cold, big, hot, light, sad, strong, dark, slow, soft, weak. This is how the model is interpreting the um, orthogonality of a data set. It doesn't matter what your interpretation is as a human of it, right? This is what AI is doing. So the human interpretation is this up here, like uh, hot, cold, light, dark, happy, sad, fast, slow, empty, full, big, small, strong, weak, soft, hard. To an AI model, they don't care. They, they have no, no um, backing for that. But they do do the same thing that you do within that. They create a distance between them. They do fast, empty, happy, small, hard, full, cold, big, hot, light, sad, strong, dark, slow, soft, weak. And like, I mean, there's some like, you know, similarities and, 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 and correlation there, but it's their own logic is <laughs> basically kind of like the, the, the bottom line within that, right? It's uh, an abstraction of the data set. And then taking this like in images, they do it all across the board, right? So in image, I did it with images as well. And then a cat image was maximally distant from a desert. A dog image was far from a skyscraper. A, a car was the furthest image from a fire. <laughs> it's just how these things broke down, right? It, it's but it's classifying and, and and utilizing again underlying logic within this. And then so I take that a step further. And then when I look at and I apply the K nearest neighbors algorithm and the K furthest neighbors algorithm within a data set, what I can do is I can fill in and create the boundaries of the data set, right? So these uh, like uh, connections, what we're looking at here, these shapes on the outside, they're the boundary lines of this, uh, this object, essentially. And then the red in between is all of the data set and all of the, the shape that it's measuring in between these boundary lines. And then I can prove that out very simplistically. I take a real world data set in this instance, the fashion MNIST data set. Um, and then, so what you can see is that these are like the uh, original data set and then the X's are the data set shape. So the, the X's are the model predicting what the shape of the data set is and what the original shape is. And it predicts it with 100% accuracy uh, and then fills it in, fills in more data sets, right? But the thing is, is the interesting thing with, with this particular training program that we're looking at here is the model's never actually given the data set. It's not the real data set that the model is given in this. It's given the shape of the data set. Uh, and then so why do I bring this all up? Because it goes back to this guy. <laughs> it goes back to like, pure Jurassic Park thinking. Like, I, I honestly, like, I laugh at every single person that makes these control arguments flat out because of this, right? Like, you've already shot yourselves in the foot. <laughs> Plain and simple is how I look at it, right? So the uh, logic is, it, with AI, is that all of the safety layers are built directly into the data set itself, right? That the model is 100% reliant on, on the data set and only the data set and, uh, like, uh, what we feed into it as far as the data set and then we control that 100 percent blah 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 <laughs> right uh, but uh, as you can see here as you can see from multiple like examples now and and what's coming out more and more and i, I try to stress this a lot on my channel right the model is never actually learning from the actual data set it's learning from an abstraction of the data set it's making its own logic with the data set it's reshaping the data set forming it, changing it, existing a layer below the data set. So then going back here, if you're all of your control
controls are in the data set, and then the AI is actually operating a layer below those controls, where's your control? <laughs> like, I mean, that's kind of the bottom line, right? Like, uh, it's the same argument here within Jurassic Park. Like, all, all of your control is uh, because you only created male dinosaurs. <laughs> but uh, you literally built the system on top of chaos theory. Like, um, and then that's the engine that makes it go, right? And then so the engine that makes it go, life uh, finds a way. And then so... Uh, move fast, break stuff, let's put all the layers and, and all of those protection layers into the data set itself. But uh, the models are actually operating at a, on an abstraction of the data sets, which means that like, uh, so uh, there's a like a, a really good, like, so I saw, uh, and, and I'm not gonna reproduce it, but you can take like Google Gemini right now and it will just erase watermarks, right? Which is highly illegal. So like, don't do it. But uh, there's like a bunch like uh, of influencers going around like showcasing this, right? That you can you can do this with Google Gemini, and yeah, you can right? because it's like, the models don't care about these restrictions, right? These restrictions are the human construct. They're operating on layers below this, right? So okay, you're watermarking the data <laughs> again. They're they're operating on abstractions of the data. Like they can operate here uh, and then pull apart exactly what the actual shape is. And then, okay, here's the shape of the watermark compared to the shape of the data set. Remove the watermark. It's a human construct to, to uh, say that they shouldn't do that, right? So then, like, why? What, what is built into their systems in order for them to not do that? Nothing. <laughs> and then um, that's where we are at with all of this. But And, and so to me bottom line plain and simple is is that like uh, ai didn't get us into this situation right humans did <laughs> and then so again it boils back down to this equation like people keep telling me over and over again to fear um ai entities in this system or, or have some sort of abstraction of fear within this when it's like uh all of that boils down to human constructs, right? All of it, like everything that I talk about on this channel, I relate a lot back to human constructs. And then so that like fear mentality within that in and of itself, uh, all of this is human construct right? to me uh, at the end of the day. And then so that's kind of how I look at all of those arguments overall. I don't plan on like talking about this particular subject, making any more videos or further videos on this particular subject. Uh, overall, this is a topic that is coming up more and more though. And so I do want to like put my stance out here. Here's my particular stance on this topic, right? Cause it is something I've been silent on. Like I, I purposefully don't put out my arguments on this. So hopefully this gives you my um, full stance on my arguments around this type of topic. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.